All right, we're going to get back to that breaking news now out of Cabarrus County. School officials there are addressing recent bomb threats that forced several schools to evacuate today. Let's go ahead and listen. All right, Dr. Kapicki, uh, in the last two days, multiple threats have been made at multiple schools here in your district, but we've, all, we've also seen in Virginia threats were made at several schools there. It's something that's happening across the country right now. What's your reaction to this? Yeah, you know, I think it's very unfortunate that you deal with situations like this. Um, anytime you have a disruption to the school day, it's, it's a very difficult thing. It's very stressful for our students, for our community, for our parents, for our faculty, all involved, um, especially our law enforcement, who has been exceptional in responding and maintaining a safe environment in our schools. Um, it's nothing that uh, you, know, you can adequately prepare for. You just have to be prepared and hopefully your protocols and routines are in place. And thankfully for us, we have a wonderful um, Cabarrus County Sheriff's Department and the Concord Police Department that work with us in a partnership to maintain a safe environment in our schools. Can you tell us about the nature of the threats? Were these gun threats, bomb threats? Yeah. Did they come in via phone or letter? Yeah, they were so two or knowledge, they were uh, uh, threats that were made by phone. Phone in, phone in threats, and there was a letter threat. Two or knowledge, they were phoned in, uh, phoned in threats, and there was a letter threat. Um, uh, four different high schools today. Uh, Northwest High School, Cox Mill High School, um, J.M. Robinson High School, and actually an elementary school as well, Cox Mill Ele Elementary School. And we had an unrelated event at one of our other high schools. It was not a bomb threat. It was an unrelated incident that was not attached to any of these incidents. So all in all, today we had five different situations we were working with um, to continue to maintain a safe environment for our kids with our local law enforcement. Yeah, it's my understanding that it was uh, it was a canned call um, that came through, and uh, we responded to that because we take every threat seriously and we respond to every threat. We investigate every threat that we get, immediately contacting the local law enforcement and putting our safe team protocols into place. Was it the same threat sent to every school? Do you believe that these were connected incidents? Yeah, good question. Um, I can't say specifically there was the same threat. Um, very similar threats. Um, all related to a bomb being somewhere on the property. Is remote learning considered for the rest of the week? Do y'all think about doing that? No, sir, we are not. When it comes to uh, the high schoolers uh, said that they had, they were evacuated, they came back, did classes and evacuated again. Could you tell us why that happened? Sure, absolutely. Time? Roughly around 9, between 9.30 and 10 o'clock this morning, uh, we evacuated the high schools that I mentioned. And we had them all back in the in the class and in session uh, at approximately 11:30 a.m. this morning. Um, soon thereafter, within about five to ten minutes, we had a second threat at Cox Mill High School. So we had to respond again immediately. As I said, we have to take every threat seriously. So it was actually a follow-up threat, the original threat. Um, so we had to evacuate them a second time, and that's why we had that second evacuation. You mentioned there was an incident at a fifth high school that was evacuated. Can you give a little bit more detail about what that incident was related to? Not not 100 percent certain at this time. I know local law enforcement is still investigating that situation, but it forced us to lock down the high school. That particular situation was not a bomb threat. Um, so I, I can't really comment to that right now because I don't have all the facts. Who made the decision to dismiss school, and why was not all the schools well, I think it's a process. I think you have to go through your safe school protocols. You have to trust the people that are in place. Um, the people in the school system are exceptional at what they do in maintaining a safe environment. It's very unfortunate that these horrific things occur and that someone has a, a mindset to disrupt the school day. Um, so our first plan always is to maintain a safe environment, get our kids to a safe situation. So when we deal with these situations, our first response is to get our safe schools team in place and get our local law enforcement involved immediately. Uh, that, that partnership is something that the community should be extremely proud of. The Concord Police Department, the Cabarrus County Sheriff's Department are just exceptional at responding to all of our threats and working with our team. Um, we also do a lot of work outside of the actual incidents that happen, so we're very prepared. Um, to, to, to deal with these situations, uh, it's not something that we look forward to by any means, but a lot of the background work and a lot of the, the training and a lot of the protocols that we practice come into play when we do this. So it's that, it's that, it's that teamwork and that's community partnership that keeps our school safe. Um, and that's kind of how we approach it. Who made the decision to dismiss schools? So if the decision to dismiss schools, it would, be, it would be me. It would come from me to make that decision. 
um, but I also coordinate with local law enforcement and the people that I work with. Um, who, again, I can't stress enough how fortunate we are to have such exceptional people working in our school system. So it's a collaborative effort. We make sure that we understand all the facts, understand the situation, make sure we're communicating with each other and have that information to make the appropriate decisions. What are the legal implications uh, for phoning in a fake or perceived fake bomb threat for anyone yeah. who may be listening who may have done it? So I want to stress emphatically that we will prosecute to the full extent of the law if we do um, determine who the person or, or, the, or, the, or the people are that are doing these threats. Um, it's not a joke. It's a very, very serious disruption. And what I want to stress to the community is this is not just the schools that they're causing the problems and the stress for. This, if you think about four or five schools that dealt with this situation today and all the resources in your community that had to respond in terms of police officers, EMS personnel, fire personnel, um, detectives, bomb squad dogs, there's a lot of resources and a lot of uh, financial capital that is spent um, when, when these situations occur. So the community, you know, I would ask the community um, if they see or hear or, say or know of anything, to, to do not hesitate to call our office and, and inform us of anything that they hear. It's the old adage, if you see something, say something. Um, it's all of us together keeping the school safe. We do our part and our community does theirs. But we want to make sure that we, we reach out to our community and tell them that if you know anything, do, I don't care what the tip is. If you hear or think you, you have some information, call us. We will prosecute to the full extent of the law. This is a major, major disruption, not only in our schools but across our community, and it's wasting valuable resources um, and, and time when, when, when we go through this. I have a question about enforcement. This is the third day that um, Cabarrus County Schools has had serious incidents within the past few days or mm -hmm. so. Are you concerned that this amount of attention is giving whoever is perpetrating these uh, threats or crimes, that this attention is exactly what they want? Yeah, I can't speak to that. All I can say to you is that we are going to continue to enforce our safe schools protocols and do everything we can to maintain a safe environment. As I said earlier, we take every threat seriously and we will not ignore any. Um, I understand your question, uh, but we're not going to let any threat go unnoticed. We're going to respond to every threat and continue to move forward to um, maintain a secure, safe school environment. I have a question for law enforcement. If you all could just reiterate that this is a felony to communicate threats to any school building, any extracurricular activities, and an additional question is that is, do you all plan to provide extra security for um, I can speak to that. Um, yes, it is a Class H felony to uh, report a false threat of mass violence uh, on an educational property. So that does take in extracurricular activities, those types of things. Uh, it's, uh, to give you some idea, it's punishable up to approximately 39 months in prison. So with any school investigation related to this, I've already talked with our elected district attorney and discussed those things, and we'll certainly be pursuing that. Uh, and yes, we'll, we'll be prepared tomorrow We'll have individuals uh, that are out there, resources, in close proximity to the school, if not at the schools, uh, so that they can respond and be there. And also uh, to help the parents that are dropping their kids off feel conf confident that uh, we are doing everything we can to address the situation. How is the investigation into today's threats going? Have you received tips? Do you have any suspects? Things of that nature. Uh, we're working jointly. Uh, the Sheriff's Office, along with Concord Police Department, uh, and, and there's a, a many other agencies that are assisting. Uh, you, you know, over in Iredale County, they've had a similar situation today. Uh, we certainly reached out to them, the FBI. Uh, we have both state and federal resources we, we reach out to. Um, we're, uh, you, you know, constantly running lit tips and leads down till we get to where we feel we have a, a good resolution. Um, you know, I think it's important for folks to know that uh, this doesn't stop once we get the kids back in school. Uh, this is the, the kids' safety is paramount in this community, and we're going to do everything we can. Uh, we're, we're fortunate through investigative efforts. We resolved the uh, issue at Northwest Cabarrus High School that involves two different bomb threats over the past two days. We've resolved that. They were false threats. We have identified an individual, and uh, we're proceeding in, through the investigation and we'll be charging that individual. This was re-yesterday? Yesterday and today. Oh.
Yes, it was the same individual. Oh, so you... Yes. Yeah, can we have a breakdown of each school and what happened and also break down the one yesterday, too, just so we can make sure our information is accurate? What, what I can... I, I can't. I just can't get into, you know, ongoing investigations. Okay. But obviously yesterday we had a, a bomb threat at Northwest Cabarrus. We had another one today. They were very consistent. And we were able to identify through an investigative process an individual... And uh, we're confident that we've resolved that and we'll be moving forward with charges and prosecution. But was that individual also responsible for the threats at the other schools today? Uh, at this point in time, we have no way of confirming that, uh, if that makes sense. I mean, there's still a lot of investigation going on. Um, uh, detectives from Concord PD and the Sheriff's Office are literally working together right now, running down leads. And so that, that would be speculation uh, on our parts. We know that the individual responsible for that particular one, what we've identified and, and feel very confident about that. And is, can you describe, or, uh, is it a student, gender, age? I can't get into gender or age. Obviously, these are students. Uh, you know, they're, they're of an age. We can't discuss that. Um, but, uh, you know, we, we feel confident we've got, you know, and I want the parents to know that uh, they can return tomorrow with their with their kids and know that we've taken care of that. But it, the most important thing, it is a false report. There was no threat to, to the students. We cleared the buildings. You know, uh, Charlotte Mecklenburg Police Department sent additional bomb squads to support the sheriff's office's dogs. And um, it went exceptionally well with the assistance of the school staff. Uh, each, each school, their staff were outstanding in, in working with us. And, and working through this process of moving a lot of kids around and back in and keeping them safe while we're doing what we do as well. And so both into Cox Mill, they were both calls today. And then can you also tell us where the letter was found, what school and where um, Yes. As Dr. Capiglia said, the uh, Cox Mill, Cox Mill Elementary were, co were phone calls. Okay. Northwest was a note both times. I don't have that information with me right here presently, uh, but I am not aware of any large absenteeisms across the district. And with today, um, we heard there was students being placed on the bleachers at the school and one may have passed out. Do you, can you confirm that? And were there any water given or was anybody taken to the hospital because of Yes, we have our evacuation sites, and there were there were a few students that um, I will say were um, dealing with some heat exhaustion issues. Yes. How Everybody many, good? if any, students were taken to the hospital for heat exhaustion? I don't believe any. All right, we're good. We're good. We'll we're good? follow up with you if you have any additional questions. I just have. I can give you some of that general timeline information Thanks. if you want to do that. So. I can kind of... All well, right, that's Cabarrus out. County school officials and law enforcement wrapping up a press conference regarding several bomb threats that forced the school to evacuate uh, earlier today. Now, we do have a live reporter there at that briefing, and we will have a full recap for you starting at 5 o'clock.